Hi, um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Alzheimer Europe for giving me the opportunity to speak this conference. And secondly, I'd like to thank all of you for coming to my presentation. And I'd like to give you a greeting in my native Irish language, which is Ceid Mila Falce, which means a thousand welcomes. So first of all, just to give you an outline of the research project goal, it's to devise, implement and evaluate appropriate responses for people with dementia within an Irish healthcare context. So when we talk about palliative care, there's a lot of misleading information um, out there about palliative care and what it, what it really does. And so just I'd like to kind of contextualize palliative care, the palliative care structure, and just tell you about the different descending levels of specialization. There's three levels in, in palliative care. There's level one, which is the palliative care approach, and that is informed by the principles of palliative care, and it aims to promote both physical and psychological well-being. The second one is um, a vital and integral part of all clinical practice in hospitals or the community, whatever the illness or its stage. The second level is a general palliative care level, and that's the intermediate level practiced by healthcare professionals with additional training and experience in palliative care. So throughout my presentation, um, when I refer to non-specialist palliative care, I'm actually referring to both level one and level two. Level three then is what you call your specialist palliative care, and that's kind of, I suppose, what we all kind of think of when we think of palliative care. And the core activity of specialist palliative care is palliative care by an interdisciplinary team under the direction of a specialist palliative care consultant. This is available in primary care, acute general hospitals, and hospices. So people might ask then, what, why palliative care for people with dementia? So I'm just going to go through the rationale, the rationale for this. In Ireland, 38,000 people um, have a diagnosis of dementia. That's expected to rise to 70,000 by 2026. People with dementia and their families may face complex decisions on care needs, ethical consideration and advanced planning. Um, people with dementia also may have comorbidities such as cardiac problems, respiratory problems, infections, etc., which may require palliative interventions. The final phase, as we are all aware, um, in, for people with dementia is challenging and can be very difficult to identify. Poor pain control and inappropriate treatment at the end stage of a person's illness um, uh, is found where there is no palliative interventions. So going back then to non-specialist palliative care, non-specialist palliative care in dementia has a role in symptom management um, and that's including um, people with dementia who display behaviours that challenge us in, 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 um, because when we're looking at palliative care, we're looking at quality of life. And people who have behaviours that challenge have an unmet need. There is something going wrong that the practitioner isn't recognising. So therefore, non-specialist palliative care would have a role in that as well. And um, personal care around dignity and privacy issues. And um, physical care, for example, nutrition. Psychological care bereavement care, both for the person with dementia and for um, their care or their family, um, end of life care, and then prompt access to specialist palliative care as required. And if you go back to my earlier slide and the description of the level three um, sta um, stage of palliative care. So when you're looking at palliative care, um, when would you think, you know, if you look at this slide, if you look at the bottom line, that's disease trajectory, and the line up the side is the functioning of the person with dementia, high at the top and low at the bottom. So when would you think, just looking at that, that um, non-specialist palliative care would come in? So just take a little minute just to look at that. So the next, the, the large round red oval that I'm going to show you here is um, when um, non-specialist care um, palliative care would come in and as you can see it's coming in from um, the per time the person is diagnosed to their end of life. So again if you think back to the two levels they um, have a function um, um, from um, a diagnosis until death. The shaded ovals now that I will put up will indicate the potential timing for specialist palliative care in that today's disease trajectory. So if you look at the first oval that's specialist palliative care coming in um, at diagnosis for the person with dementia. The next oval um, 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 shows when a person says admitted to um, hospital with possibly a chest infection or um, a respiratory infection, um, and then specialist palliative care will come in to offer their advice. And then at death, around end of life, specialist palliative care would have, a, we would see the specialist palliative care would have a role then as well. 
So how did we come up with, with the pro this project? Um, there was a consulta consultation process um, held. Um, the Irish Hospice Foundation and the Health Service Executive in Ireland came together to look at palliative care in Ireland. And what they found, that palliative care in Ireland was all about cancer. So they looked at what was going on in other countries and what was going on in the literature, and they found that palliative care um, across Europe and worldwide looked, um, uh, was seen as fun has a function um, in any life-limiting disease. So they did a consultation process within Ireland, and um, the consensus was a recognition of need of palliative care for people with dementia, symptom burden for people with dementia, a need for a comprehensive multidisciplinary team dementia services, um, a need for a, a functioning um, implementation plan. So out of this, um, there came three action research projects, um, which their um, goal is to establish palliative care within disease management frameworks, not just for cancer. So it looked at three different types, um, palliative care for people with dementia, palliative care for people with heart failure, and palliative care with, um, for advanced respiratory disease. Each project will be of two year duration and a part time project officer will be appointed at, um, at each project. So um, that brought about then the Integrating Palliative Care in Dementia Services booklet called Palliative Care for All. And this was based on the findings of that study that I spoke about um, extending and extending access to palliative care. So um, this project is used in a partnership approach. It is funded by the Irish Hospice Foundation with the Alzheimer's Society and the Baxter Foundation. It has also got support from the Health Service Executive um, in Ireland and the Department of Health and Children in Ireland also. So this is County Clare. This is the area that I um, work in. It's a large geographical area. 75% of the population um, is in rural area and there are 13,000 people over the age of 65 in this area. So the team that I work with um, is Clare Mental Health Services for Older People. The, the management team that is over the project is Dr. Tom Reynolds, who's a consultant psychiatrist um, over, over for older people, Michelle Hardiman, who's assistant director of nursing for the team, and Marisa Butler, myself, as a project officer. We also um, um, are, um, are responsible to a steering group, and on that steering group is a gerontologist, um, um, over Clare, and the regional manager of the Alzheimer's Society of Ireland, um, who again, his region will be Clare, and then a specialist palliative care consultant. So um, when Clare Mental Health Service for Older People got, um, started this project, we had a launch. And to the local papers, we sent out, um, as you can see, um, this, um, oh God, I can't think of the word, sorry. We sent out this um, uh, article and we didn't give a heading to the article. We asked people to kind of give their own heading so that each paper would have a different heading. So as you can see, um, the journalist who wrote, who wrote the heading for this article just saw the word palliative care in the article and didn't obviously read any more and gave it the heading, Clear Leads the Way in Cancer Care Research. So again, it just get, kind of gives you an idea of the misconception there is around palliative care within Ireland. So there is three sites involved in this project. Um, Kappa Hard Lodge is a mental health unit based in Ennis, County Clare, which would be the main town in County Clare. Um, it has um, um, it deals with people with dementia um, who have behaviours that challenge. And we will currently have approximately 12 patients within that unit with behaviours that challenge. Kerrigore Nursing Home is a privately run nursing home and it has a dementia specific unit. And again, there will be approximately 20 people with dementia within that dementia specific unit. St. Joseph's Hospital then is um, an elderly nursing home and it is ran by the Health Service Executive and again it would have one unit within it um, which, has dementia specific, which is dementia specific and that would have about 20 residents within that unit. So the method of working for this project is um, called action research. So it involves doing the research, but also involves taking action as well. So it involves looking at the literature, working with the people on the ground, uh, going through what the literature says is best, pra best practice for palliative care for people with dementia, and then implementing it. And uh, once it's been implemented over a few months, evaluating it and seeing was it effective. And then if it was effective, then rolling with that. And if it wasn't affecting it, then readjusting it so that it can be effective and used within each of the three sites. Um, the Clare Mental Health Service for Older People, we were involved in a practice development project to implement person-centred care within, um, within our unit and within our team. This took about two years and we found this 
a very effective way of embedding change and changing culture to a more person-centered way of working. So we are using our experience of this also within the project. We're using practice development tools for that we have learned. We're also working with a key multidisciplinary team in each site, which, uh, which means senior manager in, in each of the sites, because it's key that you get senior management on board for these kind of projects. A clinical nurse manager in the dementia unit in each of the three sites, a staff nurse, and also a healthcare assistant from each of these units. And the reason that we're doing this is that in order to embed this change, it has to come from the people on the ground. It can't come from the top down because that doesn't work. And we've experienced that in our, you know, in with, within our own unit. It has to come from the bottom up. It has to be the people on the ground that wants to change. So that's why we are working very closely with the people on the ground as well as senior management. So when we were looking at the literature around palliative care for people with dementia, what I found very interesting, and I know the team did, is that palliative care is person-centered care. They're both basically the same thing. And just in this slide from Julian Hughes' book on palliative care for people with dementia, I just think this illustrates this very well. He compares um, the pioneer in person-centered care, Kitwood, the psychological needs, um, to the World Health Organization definition of palliative care and also to the aspects of the palliative care approach by Anton Hall. So um, as you can see, this slide just illustrates very, very well um, how palliative care and person-centered care are very, very alike. So what do we want to know now from this project? What we want to know is what people know now, what the people know now on the ground about, about palliative care for people with dementia. We have done a literature review and of course it's ongoing because every month there is new articles coming out around palliative care interventions for people with dementia. Um, we, um, we have recently gotten the questionnaires back from, um, we recently sent out questionnaires and we have gotten them back, so we're going to feed back to the internal facilitators, which is the MDT, multidisciplinary team in each site, um, the results of these questionnaires, and then prioritise the learning needs and palliative interventions in a collaborative way. And in that way, we will do that with the people on the ground and senior management, the steering group, um, and they we will all together work collaboratively to implement palliative care interventions and decide what interventions we will implement in each of the three units. So how we collected our data was we used, um, because uh, um, of um, looking at palliative care for people with dementia, we've seen that palliative care was person-centered care, we needed to look at the three sites and where they were in regards to person-centered care, because two of the sites had actually been involved in a national person-centered care project within the Republic of Ireland. So we used an approach to dementia, to dementia questionnaire by Lintern and Woods. We used a palliative care questionnaire that was designed within Ireland um, by MacDonald et al. And we used a staff learning needs assessment tool. We use this tool because if we're going to work collaboratively, we have to look at the ways in which the people on the ground want to learn. There's no point in me coming in and saying, well, this is the way I think you should learn or we think you should learn. But you need to show, tell us what way you want to learn so that we can give you that learning. These questions were administered to nurses, healthcare assistants and GPs that um, work within these three units. So just to give you some of the preliminary data um, that we have gathered, again, we have just, it's very, very early stages. Um, but So we sent out 195 questionnaires to nurses and healthcare assistants, which is quite a large amount of people. 119 nursing questionnaires and 76 healthcare questionnaires went out. There was a um, 60% um, return rate, which was actually um, good, and it was 117 were returned altogether. 80 nurses returned their questionnaires, which was 67%. 37 healthcare assistants returned their questionnaires, which is 49%. We sent out five um, questionnaires to GPs, because there is only five um, GPs attending to each of these three units. Four returned, which was 80%. So what we've learned kind of earlier on is that 35% of nurses said they had undergone learning and development in relation to dementia care. But when we looked at the figures closely, we actually found that only 15% had actually dementia-specific development learning, that the other 20% um, actually um, f uh, had training in elder abuse, and they saw that as dementia training. 27% had training in palliative care, and that was because at the start of the project, we um, organized palliative care training with the local hospice. So that 27, approximately 20% of that 27% is actually training that we had provided as part of the project. 
healthcare systems then in comparison, 58% of them had development learning in dementia care and 30% had development learning in palliative care. And this was because healthcare systems in Ireland now have to do training called FETAC Level 5 in, in, um, before they can work in a nursing home or, in, or working with the elderly. So therefore they had received training as part of this, whereas nurses hadn't. So that's very interesting to start with. So in general, we, then we asked, in general, do you talk to patients about death and dying? And very interestingly, 11% of nurses said they did. And then we asked them, did they feel competent, all the nurses? And 53% said they felt competent, competent, but yet only 11% were doing it. So that's a huge variation. And again, when it came to healthcare assistance, 5% of healthcare assistants said that they were talking to patients about death and dying, but yet 33% yet were actually doing it. So again, that's a big variation. And what's very significant about the healthcare assistants is that two of the sites have a large amount of healthcare assistants um, working within them. And one of the site would have, on, a, on any given day, would have one nurse on the ward and the, the rest of the staff would be healthcare assistants. So if you have one staff nurse on a ward and the healthcare assistants um, are only 5% of talking to, are talking to patients about death and dying, who is talking to the patients then? So in general, we asked then, do you talk to relatives about death and dying? Again, nurses, 39% said they did, but yet 65% said they were competent. So what, what, why is there that gap there? And again, when it came to healthcare assistance, only 5% said they talked to relatives about death and dying, and yet 38% felt they were competent. And again, um, what's very striking there is that on the units that have a lot of healthcare assistants working and very little nurses, who is talking to relatives about death and dying? Who is doing that talking? Who is communicating with these people at, 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 a, at a stage where they need communication, they need support um, from the staff on the ground? We asked nurses, do they know how often do they refer to specialist palliative care? And do they do it? And nurses, 55.6% of nurses said that they did refer to specialist palliative care. And very interestingly, 3.7% said it wasn't their job. That wasn't part of the questionnaire, but 3.7% of the nurses actually put in their own little bit at the end and said that it wasn't their job. So that's very interesting as well. So the future. So what is the future of this project? Again, there are only preliminary findings, and there is a lot more findings to come that just we're waiting for it to be analysed. So what we um, would hope to do and what would come from our collaborative thinking is that we would, we would be facilitating dementia learning and development. We're not going to provide dementia education because if you bring somebody into a room and it, you can educate them, but they're not going to listen, they're not going to take it in. So we're going to facilitate, facilitate people to learn and develop themselves around dementia care and palliative care and dementia palliative care. Um, through work-based learning and through workshops rather than sitting them down and telling them things and telling them what they should know. We're going to facilitate dementia palliative care learning and development, as I just said. We're going to link closely with the local hospice and we're going to implement palliative interventions as the people on the ground um, and the person with dementia and their carers and families, what palliative interventions they would like implemented within the unit that their loved one um, is in. So the potential outcomes then for this project it's hopefully we'll have further clarity on the nature, potential and timing for palliative interventions for people with dementia, for service users, family members and staff. To frame a model of support and intervention for implementation in other services. Education material for key personnel in delivering palliative responses, responses and information materials for service users, family members and staff. Guidelines for the introduction of palliative interventions and referral to specialist palliative care and identification of future research needed in policy and practice in this area. So, thank you. <laughs>